Last time on Pokeball Z, Mikey loses his mind shiny hunting the mudfish Pokemon Mudkip. With Gothitas trying their best to stop Mikey, nothing could stop the indomitable human spirit of that trainer. With the shiny now in his possession, he has one challenge that remains, tryhards online. How will he hold up in VGC? Will the shiny boy fall, or will the indomitable human spirit flow into Mudkip as well? Find out now. So apparently people watch my videos. First off, thank you guys so much for all the support on the last video. It really made my day. But before I can continue with the video at hand, I must first address the elephant in the room. The fish. As I said in the last video, Top Common gets to name a beautiful baby boy. Drum roll, please. Yippee! Now when I saw this comment, I knew it would be hard to not choose this if it didn't win. So thank you Riley Chapman 1212 and congratulations on winning. But now, with everything complete in the game and no sign of a new Pokemon game, what shall I do? Commit tax evasion? I heard mudkips are particularly good at that. No, today I will venture into the side of Pokemon I have not touched since my showdown days. Online battles. Now if we want our boy to show off his new strength, we must first build a team around him. Swampert is not commonly used in Pokemon in competitive play anymore, but I remember when the beefy boy was considered a threat. Die. If you want a fantastic breakdown of Swampert's capabilities, I suggest watching False Swipe Gaming's video on how good was Swampert actually. But who cares about competitive viability? I just like it when big fish do big damage. But even I, someone with a massive IQ somewhere in the double digits, I can understand that he has a massive weakness. Touching grass. Anyways, we need to make a team for our baby boy. Of course, Tiki is our main boy, but he will not be our ace. Huh? That honor goes to Metacham. Sorry, shiny Metacham. This Metacham has been a mainstay on so many of my teams. Ever since I got him back in Omega Ruby, he has blitzed through all sorts of post-game content. Battle Tree, Battle Frontier, Your Mother, you name it, he alone is the honored one. Metacham is not a particularly great Pokemon, but he was a king in his prime. Shiny Mega Metacham. However, ever since the Mega Purge of Gen 8, he has not been able to fight at full power. Now I know these two were going to be a mainstay on my team, but I needed some more firepower. So I decided to go with this team. Uh, oh, it, and then I lost. <sighs> well, thank you for watching. Okay, plan B. Maybe I should put some effort into actually making a team. But first, let's talk about today's sponsor. Me. Please subscribe. After watching a week's worth of VGC footage and Wolfie videos, I think I am prepared. Especially after the tragedy that was my last video, I think we kick things off with a banger Pokemon no one has ever seen before. I want something unique. So I went with this random koala I found in the forest. After my, totally, first try, I finally caught the drop bear in a heel ball. Because he is such a cutie patootie, I can't wait to see what he turns into. After looking up what I needed to evolve the little fella, I decided it was time for him to go to school, since the only way to evolve this creature is for him to pass a literacy test. And just like that, our team is... Oh. Oh. My. With our freshly harvested Dilf, I swiftly added him to the team and gave him a jockstrap to hold onto. Trust me, it's for science. With the rest of my party complete, I think it's time we finally DIE! Damn, I really just lost to a family of four, but don't worry, those children will soon be orphans. The next battle consisted of an old favorite of mine, Tyranitar Garchomp, aka the Kaiju Power Hour. They are an unstoppable force unless your opponent happens to be a squirrel. If you know, you know. I started the match feeling confident, until the shiny Registeel ruined my entire day. My opponent was running the tankiest team I have ever seen, and I was the hypothetical chair he was about to sit on, because that fat ass of a glorified PS5 rocked my entire team. In the end, I knew I was bested, so I surrendered and left the battle feeling empty. Could I not win? Was I not built for this? Am I... A fraud? 600 people watching this video and I can't even hold a single win? No. No, that's not it. Am I relying on Tiki too much? Is he not? No. He is strong enough. So what we have type overlap. Neither of them have the same four times weakness. All I need is one more game. One more. To show off the strength of our boy. Thank you, Metacham. 
I'll call upon you when things get dire. Get ready for the next battle. Get ready for the next battle. Next up, the gear. God damn it. <laughs> the Gary the Snail. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> After a short manic episode due to our last match, I thunder punt a bag of salt into that godforsaken slug. After the enemy's attempt of a truce by playing patty cake, I decided enough was enough. Tiki threw a tantrum and Garchomp wanted none of it. After a second attempt at patty cake, our opponent had enough and decided to run away. Wise choice. With our first win under our belt, I was feeling more confident than ever. However, there was a darkness looming over the horizon. There was no time to celebrate. We had more work to do. We may have won, but there was something missing. Tiki has yet to go all out. With all that training under his belt, there is one piece of information I have been withholding from you, dear viewer. And that is, that Tiki... Get ready for the next battle! Our final competitor, Theo. Although his team seems out of the ordinary, it's actually quite good. There are no really hard hitters, however, everyone here has a unique build. They are made to stall out the opponent, protect an aqua ring for survivability, and another thing, none of his Pokemon are particularly fast. So they proceed to spam String Shot on Tiki in order to lower his speed below theirs. However, that's exactly what I want. <laughs> Now the slowest moves first. However, it seems that this Spite Ops is still slower and managed to move first and proceeded to remove Metacham from the battle. Garchomp gets dragged out, but that's okay. I'll stack some attack while I'm at it and finish the Spite Ops with a Dragon Claw. It's alive? So apparently in a game of Rock, Paper, Scissors, and Dragons, always bet on the stick bug. Anyways, this tanky team is getting on my nerves. Garchomp, smack his balls. With my opponent's team nearly defeated, it's time to finish this. You may be bulky, but I have the power of autism on my side. そうだ。<笑> どうせ死ぬなら、どうやって死のうと、目で<笑> そもそも <laughs> he thinks he can beat me by turning his Pokemon into a water ground Terra type. That fool! I'll just spam Trailblaze until that Swampert is as good as gone! Terra Evolution? What? Infernal Labyrinth. How is he? Tiki, Fire Blast.
Wow, that was fun! Who knew setting a fish on fire would be such a great idea? Now I know this team may not be the best competitively, I mean, hell, look at Metacham's stats. But these ones... But these are ones I hold dear to me, especially since half of this team comes from my DS, whether traded to me or raised myself. These Pokemon will all hold a special place in my heart. It's been a fun journey. I've beaten the game, beat the DLC, completed the Pokedex, caught the one shiny I never had, and took them into online battles. Half of that I wouldn't have even considered back in the day. I would spend countless hours just wonder trading with a friend on his front porch and looking up how to get mythicals legally. I just wanted to say thank you all. Thank you for sticking with me for these two videos, I suppose. <laughs> these last two videos. Um, we're almost at a thousand subs, which is crazy to me. I know it's not a lot, but I appreciate it. And uh, thank you and have a great blessed day.